This video is going to continue our series on multiple linear regression. However, the topic of this particular video is going to be about analysis of variance. So we're going to revisit ANOVA to try to address how ANOVA estimates one mean for each level. If we can understand this, I think we're going to have a huge advantage on understanding multiple linear regression and the options we have within that framework for modeling the world around us. So let's just start a new page here and remember that analysis of variance has some categorical explanatory variable on the x-axis for which there is more than two levels. And then there's a response variable on the y-axis, which is numeric the same as for multiple linear regression, which also has one numeric response variable. In the world of analysis of variance, we are trying to um, essentially compare group means, which I'm going to represent as these dots. So that first dot is the mean for level A of the response variable Y. This next dot is the mean for level B of the response variable y, and the third dot is the mean for level c of the response variable y. So if y was something like tail length, and a, b, and c were different islands from which your animals could come from, we'd say the mean tail length of animals from island a is whatever that first dot is there, whatever height that has on the y-axis. And so really what we're trying to do is ask the question, are the means equal? But when you're making predictions, that is you're going to predict on the y-axis some value y hat, analysis of variance is rather particular about how it composes or builds these predictions such that you get a unique prediction for each level of the categorical explanatory variable. So let me write out how it does it, and we'll talk about what's going on as we go. So if you're going to make a prediction for your numeric response variable y, we'll call the predictions y hat, we're going to break apart that prediction in terms of these coefficients, we call them, uh, denoted beta. And we're going to denote the coefficient for the first level, that is a, by beta naught. And the reason we're picking different letters and subscripts is we don't necessarily care what the names of the levels are for your categorical explanatory variable. We want to be able to reference them in a kind of general way. So we're going to denote the first level's mean as beta naught with a hat on it so that we know we are estimating the first level's mean. And in this case, the first level numerically or alphabetically is A. And then from there, we're going to add to it this extra coefficient, which we're going to denote beta hat subscript 1. And then we're going to multiply that by this funny bit. We call this bit an indicator variable. And that indicator variable will indicate with a 1, the value 1, whenever we're trying to make a prediction for a, a whatever from level B. OK, before I say any more on that, let me write out the final term in this hypothetical analysis of variance model, where we have a third coefficient that corresponds to the level C but it does so in particular ways. And attached to that uh, beta hat 2, which is the next coefficient that corresponds to level C, there is another indicator variable that indicates when we're making a prediction for level C. So anytime we're making a prediction for level C, this indicator variable will be 1, and this one will be 0, because we're making, whoops, zero, because we're making a prediction for level C. Let me get rid of those. Alternatively, if we were making a prediction for level B, 
this one would become one and this one would become zero. If we are making a prediction for level B, this is how the indicators would indicate whichever level we're trying to make a prediction for. So let's get rid of those and back up. So here we are. We've got the common plot for analysis of variance, and now we're beginning to form a written model for analysis of variance. And you can work your way through the model by imagining when predicting for level A. Look what happens. We're trying to estimate y hat for level A. So we go through the model piece by piece. We have beta hat naught because that is the group mean for level A plus beta hat one times the indicator variable for B. Now, this is an indicator variable for the level B, but we're trying to make a prediction for level A. So in fact, we get zero times beta hat one, and this whole term goes to zero. So you know what? I'm just going to erase it. Okay, so we now know because of the indicator variable attached to the coefficient that corresponds to level B, we don't actually include that term at all when we're predicting for level A. Okay, so let's just go to the third term in our model. We've got beta hat 2 times the indicator variable for level C. But are we making a prediction in this made-up scenario for level C, or are we making a prediction for level A? Because we're making a prediction for level A, the indicator variable for level C is 0, which means 0 times beta hat 2 is 0, which means really we don't need that term at all. So if you notice, when making a prediction for level A, the only term we need to focus on is beta hat naught, and that corresponds to our plot above that indeed beta hat naught recovers for us the mean of level A. Okay, let's try our scenario in a new world. What if we were going to predict for level B? When predicting for level B, we're going to have y hat, I'll just keep that the same down here, equals to, look at beta hat naught. There are no indicator variables attached to beta hat naught, which means no matter what level we're predicting for, beta hat subscript zero, which I'm calling beta hat naught, will always show up. Okay, so be it. So we'll go beta hat naught plus beta hat one times the indicator variable for level B. And indeed, because we are trying to predict for level B, this whole term just goes to one. So we have beta hat naught plus beta hat one times one, which is really just beta hat one. And I think you get the idea now. We don't need the third term in this model because the indicator variable for level C will be zero when predicting for level B. So if we look at this and we try to identify how these two components give us the appropriate prediction for level B, the only way this can work is up here, if that's the mean for level B, then this difference between beta hat naught and the mean for level B has to be beta hat one. So in this case, beta hat one is positive. You start with the mean for level A and you add to it an offset for appropriate for level B. So it turns out this beta hat one and beta hat two are offsets relative to the mean for level A. Okay, let's try our third scenario. In this case, we're going to make a prediction for level C. Now, here has, here's how it goes. We want to predict Y. We'll call it Y hat. We're going to say that's equal to beta hat naught, which is the mean for level A. There's no indicator variables attached to that, so beta hat naught should always show up, plus beta hat one times an indicator variable appropriate for level B. Now, we're making a prediction for level C. So what does that indicator variable for level B give us? Indeed, a zero. So this whole term goes away. Let's just 
erase it. And if you're catching on at this point, the next term we'll have in this prediction appropriate for level C is just going to be beta hat 2, because the indicator for level C, when making a prediction for level C, is going to be 1. 1 times beta hat 2 will just leave us with beta hat 2. Now, relative to our picture above, what we're looking at is we'll take beta hat naught and then add to it an appropriate offset for level C. And in this case, we know because the group mean for level C is smaller than the group mean for level A, it turns out this offset appropriate for level C would have to be negative according to the picture that I drew above. But that's fine. That's the way the world can work because the different means are different values and they're allowed to be whatever they need to be. We just have to remember these coefficients can be positive or negative. So what we've got here is a theoretical framework for predicting based on analysis of variance. What you need to know is how these indicator variables work. I'm going to get rid of the words for cleanliness so that you have as a final image the exact pieces you need. You need to understand how the indicator variables work, and you need to acknowledge that all of these offsets, whoops, I accidentally erased a hat over beta hat too. All of the offsets here are relative to the first level in your categorical explanatory variable. So if your categorical explanatory variables has letters, then whatever letters show up first, R is going to automatically choose as the reference group. In this case, A comes before B and A comes before C. So R would choose level A as the reference group from which these offsets are calculated. But if your categorical explanatory variable had numbers in it, totally possible, then R would choose the smallest number to be the reference group from which these offsets will be calculated.